Hello everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of The Fat Vegan Chef. Today I'm going to be making another Thai curry. One of my Instagram followers, Micro Kells, requested that I make a yellow Thai curry with the curry ma be made from scratch. And I happily obliged. I did some research, made a couple of tweaks here and there, and hopefully this is going to be easy and tasty for you. If you have requests, please feel free to let me know at either the Fat Vegan Chef or at any of my social media pages. Just look for the Fat Vegan Chef. And I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, Hello, Google+, Tumblr, and others. And while you're there, please follow me and share me with your friends and let them subscribe as well. I do post a lot of stuff there that you cannot find on my website, a lot of extra content, a lot of behind the scenes, that kind of stuff. And it also lets you know when a new video has been posted, because I will let you know on my social media as well. So let's go ahead and find out what tools and ingredients that we're going to need to make yellow Thai curry from scratch. The tools that you're going to need to make this dish are a cutting board with a damp towel underneath, You'll need a ladle, a, a cooking spoon, another cooking spoon, can opener, a knife and a paring knife, measuring spoons, measuring cups, a spice grinder, a peeler, a pan to put our ingredients in, a wok, of course, a pot with a lid, and a food processor or a blender. The ingredients that you're going to need to make the main dish are two tablespoons of coconut oil, one tablespoon of toasted sesame seed oil. You may need more depending upon how much oil that you use when you cook the vegetables. And also these vegetables just are an idea, a baseline. You can mix and match them. You can put in your own vegetables if you want, depending upon how you're able to find them in your area, that kind of stuff. So this is just a guideline for you. One half cup of cornstarch, and we're going to use, and we're going to split this in half, so it'll be like a quarter cup and a quarter cup. One block of firm to extra firm tofu. I use the fresh stuff that I found at my Asian market. You can use the stuff in water. Just make sure that you drain the water and squeeze the water out as much as you can out of the tofu. Red pepper flakes and red chili powder to taste, depending upon how hot you like your curry one small to medium carrot that's been cut in half and then cut diagonally one quarter cup of canned bamboo shoots eight to ten baby carrots that i have cut up into bite-sized pieces six baby bella mushrooms that i have sliced one cup of snow peas that i have cut in half this is two thai bok choys that i have cut up into pieces one red bell pepper and I actually use red and yellow just for color. And you can do the same if you would like. This is a couple of Japanese eggplants that I have cut in half and then cut into half moons. And you can use regular eggplant if you can't find Japanese eggplants. One can of coconut milk, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, two cups of vegetable stock, half a cup of toasted cashews, and then we'll also use some Thai basil and some Thai basil flowers uh, for garnish. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our curry paste. You're going to need some spices that have been toasted and then ground. If you need to know how to toast and grind spices, go to thefatbiggingchef.com and look for the recipe right for this actually a tip and technique where I show you how to toast and grind spices. And this mixture is two teaspoons of coriander seeds, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, a quarter teaspoon of black peppercorns, a half a teaspoon of Szechuan peppercorns, a quarter teaspoon of grains of paradise. You'll also need uh, two shallots that's been roughly chopped, three cloves of garlic that's been roughly chopped, a half inch piece of gall and gall, and if you can't find gall and gall, you can use ginger if you would like. I found this at the Asian market. And this is what gall and gall looks like. 
It's a little bit more woodsy than what ginger is. Basically, you want to peel off the skin and then chop it up really rough. Make sure you have a sharp knife because, again, it's really woodsy and it's going to be kind of tough to chop. You also need one teaspoon of ground turmeric, two to four Thai chilies that's fresh, two tablespoons of coconut milk, two kaffir lime leaves that's been roughly chopped, four curry leaves that's been roughly chopped. And if you can't find um, kaffir lime leaves, you can grind off some lemon zest and use some lemon zest instead. This is a stalk of lemongrass that's been chopped. And this is some vegan fish sauce that I found at the Asia market. If you can't find vegan fish sauce, you can basically take some seaweed and soak it overnight and then use that water for fish sauce. And if you want to, you can also add some fermented beans to that as well that you can find at the Asian market and probably at some local grocery stores as well. Now that you know what ingredients that you're gonna to need to make this dish, go ahead and pause the video, shop for your ingredients, get them all ready to go and I'll meet you back here once everything's done. You want to have everything ready to go because when we actually cook it on the stove it cooks really fast and we want to have everything prepared ahead of time. Welcome back everybody. Glad you have all of your ingredients gathered. Let's go ahead and make the curry really quick. First thing I want to do is put in all of my woodsy type ingredients like my gall and gall and my garlic shallots. This is the lemongrass. I'm going to go ahead and put in my vegan fish sauce and my coconut milk. I'm going to go ahead and put in my chilies as well. That's my curry leaves and my kaffir lime leaves. My spices. Now let's go ahead and give this a blend. And we're going to blend this until everything turns into a nice smooth paste. I have my curry paste pureed up pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and get this put in the container and then I will see you over at the stove. Now that we have all of our ingredients prepped and ready to go, let's go ahead and cook this. Back here I have my rice cooking and I'm cooking up enough for four cups of rice. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the stove for my wok. I've got it on high. We want the wok to be as hot as we can get it. Again, this cooks really fast. You want to make sure everything is prepped and ready to go before you begin cooking because of the high heat and the quickness that this cooks. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our tofu and half of our cornstarch. And I'm going to go ahead and put half of the cornstarch on the tofu and I'm going to go ahead and coat the tofu with the cornstarch. Okay, I've got that coated. Now let's go ahead and cook. I'm going to put in some of my sesame seed oil and some of my coconut oil to get this really hot. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add my tofu and my red pepper flakes. And I'm going to cook this until the tofu is nice and brown. The tofu is done. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in a pan. And I'm going to put something on top of it to keep the tofu warm. Add a little bit more oil. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue to cook the rest of my vegetables until they're all done. I have my vegetables pretty much cooked off. And as usual, my mind is bigger than my pan. I have a whole bunch of vegetables that are nice and cooked here, so I don't know if we're going to need all of them, but I'm sure going to try. Now I'm going to go ahead and start making the sauce. I turned down my heat a little bit to about medium high. I'm going to go ahead and start making the curry sauce. I'm adding in a little bit of 
sesame and coconut oil into the pan again. And as you can tell, it's a hot pan. I'm going to go ahead and add my paste mixture. I'm going to saute this for a few minutes. Or walk it, I should say. Go ahead and let this cook for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add the can of coconut milk, a tablespoon of soy sauce, sugar, chili paste. Let this cook for a few minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to let this come up to a boil and then what we're going to do is the only ingredients that we have left are the cashews, vegetable stock, and the other half of the cornstarch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the vegetable stock in the cornstarch and get that into a nice slurry and that's going to help thicken up our sauce a little bit. The curry mixture has come up to a boil so I'm going to go ahead and add my vegetable stock and corn starch slurry. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in some of my vegetables. I need to make sure we get in all of the tofu as well. And last but not least, let's go ahead and add in some of the cashews. What we'll do is we'll bring this up to a boil again, let this cook for a few minutes, and then we're going to finish it off with some fresh julienne Thai basil, and then I will see you back over at the counter. Go ahead and put in Thai basil, give this a quick stir. We'll let this sit for just a minute or so with the heat off, and then we'll go ahead and plate. Have my rice cooked, my curry made, well, let's go ahead and plate. Now, first thing you want to do is decide whether you're gonna put your rice on the side or your curry on top of the rice. I think for this time, I'm gonna go ahead and put my curry on top of the rice. And again, I have some jasmine rice here that I cooked according to the directions. Now let's go ahead and scoop some of the curry on top of the rice. Doesn't that look good? Mm, making me hungry. Now we can go ahead and garnish this with some high basil leaves. And some Thai basil flowers. like so. And this is my rendition of Thai yellow curry. I want to thank all of you for watching another video from me, the Fat Vegan Chef. Thank you again, MicroCals, for this great suggestion. This was really fun to do and I appreciate your suggestion. If you have a suggestion, please let me know. Just go to thefatveganchef.com to submit your suggestion or you can contact me at your favorite social media site. Just look for The Fat Vegan Chef. Be sure to follow us and share our site with your friends and family. And when you do follow us, you do get great extra content and you also get to know when I post my next video. If you like this recipe and you found it useful, please consider donating at tfbc.org forward slash donate. That's tfbc.org forward slash donate. That helps me buy more ingredients for more recipes. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.